This is lesson 15 in our Calculus 1 series, Linear Approximations and Differentials. Let's start this lesson by looking at f of x equals x to the third plus 2x squared minus 1 and finding an equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 1. So we know that our point of tangency is going to be negative 1 f of negative 1. So if we plug x equals negative 1 into our function, we get negative 1 to the third plus 2 times negative 1 squared minus 1. So we have a negative 1 plus 2 minus 1. That gives us a 0. So our point of tangency is negative 1 comma 0. And we know the slope for this tangent line is going to be the derivative f prime evaluated at x equals negative 1. So we need to find f prime of x and then plug in x equals negative 1. So f prime of x is going to be 3x squared plus 4x minus 0, right? So 3x squared plus 4x. And plugging in x equals negative 1 gives us 3 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1. So that's 3 minus 4, that's a negative 1. So our slope for the tangent line is equal to negative 1. So our point is negative 1, 0, our slope is negative 1, and so the equation for our tangent line is y equals negative x minus 1. So here's the graph of our curve f of x and the tangent line at x equals negative 1. Now notice if we zoom in really close near x equals negative 1, the function and the tangent line aren't very different. So we could use the tangent line to approximate function values at x values near x equals negative 1. And that's what linear approximations and differentials are all about. In the application of mathematics to real world problems, a lot of the functions that we have are very complicated and difficult to compute, meaning they require a lot of computer operations. So if we can approximate them with simpler functions, that's going to be very helpful. And so this is the very beginning of that topic. We're approximating our functions using tangent lines. So for f of x equals x to the third plus 2x squared minus 1, our tangent line at x equals negative 1 is y equals negative x minus 1. And so for x values near x equals negative 1, we can say f of x is approximately equal to negative x minus 1. So what we're saying is that these values coming out of our function are approximately equal to the values you'll get from using negative x minus 1, from using the tangent line instead. So if we're looking for a value for f of negative 1.02, for example, notice this is near x equals negative 1. That's the point of tangency for our tangent line. We can approximate f of negative 1.02 by plugging it into the tangent line here and taking negative of that value minus 1. And so that's 0 0.02. And so again, this is a linear approximation. We're using the tangent line to approximate the function value. And just to compare our approximation to the actual value, if we plug negative 1.02 into the original function f, we get 0 0.019592. So our approximation of 0 0.02 is very reasonable. And so we say f of x is approximately equal to negative x minus 1. This is the linear approximation to f of x near x equals negative 1, or we could say at x equals negative 1. This is also called the linearization of f of x at x equals negative 1. And remember, it's very important that we only use this tangent line approximation, this linear approximation, for x values near the point of tangency. So for x values near x equals negative 1 in this case. Because if we move far from x equals negative 1, the tangent line and the original function are not at all alike. So this linear approximation is a local linear approximation, and it's only valid for x values near the point of tangency. So we just took a look at an example, but let's take a look at the general notation. So we start with our equation of a line, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. And when we're talking about a tangent line to f of x at x equals a, we know that the slope m is going to be f prime of a, and we know that the point x1, y1 is going to be a comma f of a. 
So plugging that information in here gives us y minus f of a is equal to f prime of a times x minus a. And so if we just add f of a to both sides, we're here, y equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And this is an equation of the tangent line. And so when we write f of x is approximately equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. This is the local linearization of f at x equals a. So let's take a look at an example. Use a linear approximation to estimate radical 99.8. Well, if this is what the formula for a linear approximation looks like, we need two things. We need to know what f of x is, and we need to know the point of tangency, x equals a. So what's our function f of x, and what's our point of tangency, x equals a? The simplest f of x we can come up with would be radical x. If we let f of x equal radical x, and we're trying to get an approximation for radical 99.8, we need a point of tangency that is convenient for f of x equals radical x that is near 99.8. We know that 100 is near 99.8 and conveniently fits under a radical because radical 100 is equal to 10. So let's make a equal 100. That's going to be our point of tangency. So again, if we're trying to estimate our function value at 99.8, we're looking for an x value that is near this number, but that fits conveniently into the function. So if we're describing this as f of x equals radical x, we want x equals 100 to be the point of tangency. And so our point a f of a is going to be 100 comma 10. And our slope is going to be f prime of 100. And so here's f of x. f of x is equal to radical x. That's x to the 1 half power. And so its derivative is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half or 1 over 2 radical x. So f prime of 100 is going to be 1 over 2 radical 100. So that's 1 over 20, or 0 0.05. And this is going to be the slope of our tangent line. Or we could just take it and plug it into our formula for the linearization. f of x is approximately equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So f of a we said was equal to 10. And we got that by plugging a equals 100 into our original function. Our slope f prime of a is 0 0.05, and here we have x minus 100. So this is our local linearization for f of x near x equals 100, or at x equals 100. And so let's use this to approximate radical 99.8. Radical 99.8 is equal to f of 99.8 which is approximately equal to 10 plus 0 0.05 times 99.8 minus 100. And so simplifying there, we get that radical 99.8 is approximately equal to 9.99. Let's take a look at another example. Use a linear approximation to estimate sine of 3. Now remember, this means three radians, because we're always using radians in calculus, unless otherwise specified. So again, if we're asked to use a linear approximation, we need two things. We need to know what's our original function, f of x, and what's the point of tangency, x equals a. Looking at this evaluation, sine of 3, the most convenient function to choose would just be sine of x. So let's use f of x equals sine of x. And then we need a convenient x value, a value that's near 3 that conveniently plugs into sine of x. So how about x equals pi, or a equals pi in this notation? Pi is approximately 3.14. That's near 3. So let's use a equals pi. And then our point of tangency is going to be pi comma sine of pi, a comma f of a sine of pi is 0, and so we have pi comma 0 here. 
So this is the point of tangency. This is a f of a. And now we need f prime of a. We need f prime of pi to be our slope here. So f prime of x is cosine x. f prime of pi is then cosine pi, which is negative 1. So that's the slope of our tangent line. And so plugging into the formula, we have f of x is approximately equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And so simplifying here, we have f of x is approximately equal to negative x plus pi for x values near x equals pi. And f of x is equal to sine of x, so we could also write sine of x is approximately equal to negative x plus pi for x values near x equals pi. Since 3 is near pi, we can approximate sine of 3 using this linear approximation. And so sine of 3 is approximately negative 3 plus pi. And that is our linear approximation. Now with some new notation, we can use the idea of the linear approximation to get a quick estimate of how errors propagate in computations. So let's talk about the differentials dx and dy. So far, we've seen dy dx to mean the derivative of y with respect to x. Another notation for that is f prime of x. But dy and dx don't yet have any meaning on their own. We've only seen dy dx in this notation. And it's not really a quotient here, it's just a symbol that means f prime of x. Now we're going to introduce dx and dy and we'll see how the quotient fits this symbolic notation. So we're going to introduce dx as an independent variable. That means it can take on any value. And then for y equals f of x, we define dy to be f prime of x multiplied by dx. So this is going to be the definition of dy. dx could be any value, and then dy is going to be defined this way for y equals f of x. Then let's take a look at the quotient dy divided by dx. dy divided by dx is going to be just f prime of x. And that is equal to dy dx in the symbolic notation. So the notation here is consistent if we define our differentials dx and dy this way. But let's take a look at geometrically what this means. We said dx, our differential, is an independent variable, meaning that it can take any value. We're going to have that the same as delta x, always, for differentials. And delta x is the change in x value that we have from our original x value to the next x value. So this is x, f of x, this point here. And then we're going to move over delta x units in the x direction. We know that at the point of tangency, the tangent line and the function evaluation are the same. But near the point of tangency, for the x value x plus delta x, we're interested in how different these values are. So let's take a look at the notation here. We have delta y being the change in y value between these two points when you're looking at the original function. So delta y is f of x plus delta x minus f of x. Both of those y values are coming from the original function. dy, as we defined it, is going to be the change in y value that you get when you travel along the tangent line. So dy is equal to f prime of x times dx, or f prime of x times delta x, same value. And that's the change in y value that you get when you use the tangent line as an approximation. So we're interested in delta y, but we use dy as an approximation to it. Again, dy is the change in y value when using the tangent line approximation. And this will be an approximation to delta y, the actual change in function value. Now notice the linear approximations we did above use the differential. 
Here we have f prime of a times x minus a. Well, x minus a is delta x, and so this is the differential. It's part of the linear approximation. But we use differentials alone when we're more interested in delta y, the change in y values or function values for a given delta x, or change in x values. We use the differential dy to approximate delta y. So let's take a look at this example. The radius of a circular disk is given as 24 centimeters with a maximum error in measurement of 0.2 centimeters. Use differentials to estimate the maximum error in the calculated area of the disk. So now we're saying we have this value for radius of 24 centimeters, but it could be off by 0.2 centimeters. So that is our delta R, 0.2 centimeters. And we want to know how badly can this error affect the calculation of area. We know that area is equal to pi r squared, so let's call this f of r. This is our function evaluation, and we are approximating this to be pi times 24 squared because this is the measured radius. But we want to know if that radius could be off by 0.2 centimeters, how far off could our area computation be with this error? So what we're interested in is delta a, the actual error in the area computation, but we'll approximate that by dA, the differential. So delta A is approximately dA, and this is our differential, which is defined to be f prime of r dr. It's like dy is equal to f prime of x dx. Same thing going on here. dA is equal to f prime of r dr. And we know dr is the same as delta r just as dx is the same as delta x. And so f prime of r dr is equal to f prime of r delta r, and that's 2 pi r delta r. And so in this case, that is 2 pi times 24 times 0 0.2. So that's 9.6 pi centimeters squared. So we are approximating that the error in area computation can be as much as 9.6 pi centimeters squared based on this maximum error in the radius of 0.2 centimeters. So again, we're interested in delta A, and we approximate that using dA, the differential. And if we go and compute the actual delta A, we find that that's 9.64 pi centimeters squared. So we have a pretty good approximation here. Part B of the problem asks us to find the relative error and the percentage error. So this is our approximation for the error in area. And the relative error is then going to be delta A over A. So it's the error in the area over the computed value. So we approximated the error by dA as 9.6 pi centimeters squared. So that goes in our numerator. And the computed area using r equals 24 is pi r squared. And so this computation comes to be 0 0.017 approximately. And so that is an estimate of our relative error. And then writing it as percentage error, we just change this relative error into a percent. So that's 1.7 percent. And with this, we'll conclude our lesson on linear approximations and differentials.